All right, everybody, quiet the set, cue the lobby, prepare to launch. This is take one of the fundamentals of economics in Fortnite with Mr. Sin. And action! By now, many of you have heard of Fortnite, and I'm sure many of you have played Fortnite. But did you know that when you're playing Fortnite, you're actually making a bunch of economic decisions? There is thousands and thousands of decisions that you are making every single game without even fully realizing it. And in this video, I'm going to be kind of illustrating all these different economic concepts that are actually occurring every single time you play Fortnite. So really quick, before we get into gameplay, me playing Fortnite, and yes, all the clips in here are me playing it. You'll be able to judge my questionable skills in Fortnite in just a little bit. I'd like to encourage you to use the guided notes. I've created guided notes to go along with this video to help you focus on the main economic concepts. This video is gonna be switching back and forth between me talking and then me talking over gameplay. So it can get a little bit busy and possibly even confusing. So the guided notes will help you focus and make sure you're remembering all the important economic concepts while also enjoying the video. So take out those guided notes and let's get into now what's going on with Fortnite and these economic concepts. Economics is the study of how society allocates scarce resources. Now, one of the things we have to understand is that people have unlimited wants and needs. In case you didn't realize it, you'll never be fully satisfied with the things you own in life. That's just human nature. We always need more things to survive and we always will want more things as well. Now, this is where scarcity comes into play. We only have so many resources available to us. Now, we can actually see these first concepts already illustrated in Fortnite before you even get into a game. So let's take a second right now and actually look at the lobby or the main menu and understand what's already happening the minute we start the game. Once the player loads Fortnite, we can see they are presented with a bunch of different options. Now, we have scarcity here because we actually can only choose one. We have to choose one option for all of our decisions every single time we play. Now each game we can do different choices, but I have to use my time wisely. I only have so much time. Time here is what's scarce. So I have to make a decision. I can see here I'm trying to figure out what game mode do I want to play? Do I want to do solos, duos, squads? Do I want to do the featured one of the week? Or do I want to go to creative mode? But these aren't the only choices that I can make from this main menu. Our choices don't just stop with what game we want to do. We can also go over to the locker and here players will have to make a choice on which pickaxe they want to use from all the different pickaxes they've unlocked in the game or purchased through the item shop, what music they want playing while they're even just selecting their different items, what skin do they want to equip, and here there's also different rarities of skins, same thing with the pickaxes, and the back bling and the glider, all different things that they can pick from. We also have gun skins and the loading screens. So we can see players here are confronted with a bunch of different options and choices. However, each game, there is a scarcity. They only can have one equipped at a time. We have a limited amount of spots available. So while most of the skins that people have and gliders and pickaxes and back bling will probably remain unused, that's because they have to make a choice. And here comes our first main economic concept besides scarcity. As we can see right now, there is scarcity occurring in Fortnite. We haven't even gotten into the game yet and I'm having to make a bunch of different choices. Now, as a player, we only have so much time that we can play each time we log on to our computer or PlayStation, Xbox, Switch, phone, whatever it may be. So I have to make sure that I'm doing choices that will make sure that I have fun and I enjoy the game and I get to possibly even get a win. Now, this is where scarcity is at play because the game only lets me pick only a certain amount of options each time I play. So I have to make choices every single time. If we go back to the locker, I can look at all the different skins. Here now, I actually have to make a decision. This is our next economic concept. We've just gone over what scarcity is, and that is the fundamental economic problem that every society deals with. But here, I have to make actually some choices, and this is known as trade-offs. Trade-offs are when we have scarcity occurring, and I have to choose between different options. So for here, I'm looking at the different skins. Which skin should I go with for this game? So I'll have to make a choice. If I decided to go with the Black Knight, well, that's great, but now I've made a choice and I have picked this over everything else. 
And this gets into our next economic concept, which is the opportunity cost. Now, the best way to actually explain opportunity cost is for you to see it in action. So we're back in the locker and I'm looking at the different skins that I can choose for this game. Remember, we have scarcity. I only have one spot. However, I have a variety of things I can pick from. So I only have my one option that I can actually go with for this game. So trade-offs are going to be occurring. Now, let's say that I'm debating between the Black Knight, Ragnarok, the Raven, and Hollowhead. Now, all of these I like to play with. However, right now, I'm really feeling like either Ragnarok or the Black Knight. So I've narrowed my list down to two. At the end of the day, I think I'm just going to go with, again, the Black Knight. Now, what's my opportunity cost here? Well, there's only one opportunity cost. Opportunity cost is always our next best alternative. If I wasn't going to go with option A, I would have gone with option B. In this case, option B would be the Ragnarok skin. The other skins, the Raven and Hollowhead, are not my opportunity cost. Those are down further on the list. So again, I went with the Black Knight, but if I didn't go with the Black Knight, I would go with Ragnarok. So that one would be my opportunity cost. So we can see that we have a bunch of different economic concepts already at play before we even load the game. And we haven't even talked about the item shop or the fact that this is a free to play game where you can buy microtransactions within it. In fact, we're actually not gonna address that in this video. However, if you are interested in this concept, consider subscribing. In the future, I'm going to be doing some videos that'll cover violence in video games, video games and society, psychology, sociology, and how video games work, even how microtransactions actually kind of try to trick your brain to try and get you to spend more. So if you're interested in any of those topics, consider subscribing and then check back on the channel later. However, right now, we're gonna focus back on these main economic concepts and actually jump into the game right now. All right, so I'm on the bus right now and now I have to already make another economic decision. The question of where should I actually go? Again, I can only land in one location. And this actually gets into utility. If you ask any Fortnite player where they like to drop, well, their answer will vary. One, probably depending on their play style. Two, on the mood that they're in. Three, if they're with a squad, duos are by themselves. Or if they're trying to really get the win or get a kill game, or if they're just trying to play for fun. So all these things factor into where you drop. Other things too is even the direction of the bus and what locations it's going to go over. And this gets into how we value things. Everyone has a different answer to this question because utility is not fixed. It's not something that we can easily measure like height or weight. Instead, utility of a good, a service, or in this case, a location will vary from person to person because of their experiences and also how much satisfaction they get out of all the different locations. If players were truly always concerned about winning, we should only factor in then a couple things into our decision of where to drop. One, how much loot is going to be available for us to use, and also the likelihood of other players dropping there. If we wanted the best success rate, well, we want to land in a location that has a lot of loot, but won't have as many players. That way, most people kill each other off, and you'll be able to succeed and live the longest. Yet, most Fortnite players don't do that every game, because there's other things at play. People are valuing different locations differently, based on the experience that they want to get and the satisfaction they're looking for. And again, we can see this is different for every single person. So for this game, I've decided to actually go to the block, a relatively new area in the map that changes weekly. There's a lot of loot here this week, and I think this one's actually pretty fun to go to. So here we can see it. One, I just had to make a decision, and we had trade-offs at play due to scarcity of the locations I can drop at. But here you can see also we have scarcity with loot. Now here at this location, there's actually a lot of chests, which give out a lot of loot. So I actually have a pretty high chance of being able to get some good guns. However, in Fortnite, scarcity is used with ranking guns. All the guns are color-coded. Now, you might think that, well, this is an easy decision for players to make. Whichever gun is gold, which is the most scarce gun in the game, you should always take those. However, that's not what happens during a player's decision. You can see here, I'm picking up different loot, and I have to decide what I want based on my play style and which guns I like. Just because one gun is more scarce does not mean that I think it's better. There's different values that I will hold on the guns. And again, this goes into satisfaction and utility and also the value that I'm putting on these weapons. And here we can actually get into another concept of scarcity 
trade-offs and this thing called paradox of value. And it's an important concept that happens a lot in real life and it actually happens throughout Fortnite as you play. The paradox of value looks at why certain items that have no necessity in our lives have an extremely high monetary value, while other items that we really need to survive have a little to no value. We can actually see this happen, one in real life all the time, but also in Fortnite. Depending on what you're doing in the game and what your current situation is, we value items differently. And that value of the items will change consistently as your situations change throughout the game. Let's actually take a look in Salty Springs. So here we can see I'm now dive bombing with the airplane, kind of dunking on this player, taking him out. However, what happens now is this concept of the paradox of value. So I'll have to take out the zombie here, and now I can actually get into the loot. So there's a ton of loot that I can see around here. I have to make a bunch of decisions pretty fast because the zone is going to be closing in and the likelihood of someone else finding me is pretty high. So here I swap out my gun. I'm now gonna get the nice legendary scar, but I have to decide what items to take. And this is a difficult decision. Ideally, I should take actually the med kit and also the mini shields. Those are the things that'll actually keep me alive. If I wanna win the game, I need to be alive. And the odds of me getting shot throughout this game are still pretty high, or me getting stuck in the storm. So the shield and the med kit are my best. I can see I just decided that now the rocket launcher is actually more valuable than the grappler. And again, we're still making all these decisions on the fly. So based on my situation here, I've decided actually that I don't really need the med kit or the mini shields. However, if the situation was changed and let's say I had 50 health and no shield, I probably would be picking those up because how I'm valuing the items will change, it'll shift. And this comes back to our utility. Do I have a need for these items right now? No, so I'm not really thinking ahead for what might happen in the future, I'm thinking about right now. The paradox of value is a really interesting concept that happens all the time. In real life, it could look like this, where maybe let's say you're on a game show and you have to choose between diamonds and water. You're probably gonna choose the diamonds. However, if we were stuck out in the desert and we're running out of water, you probably are now gonna choose the water. Well, what changed? You're now valuing the items differently, even though the items haven't changed. The only thing that changed now is the usefulness for it or what you need from them. Originally, you probably looked at the diamonds and water and thought of monetary value. Now, however, we're thinking of survival. We can see that in Fortnite all the time when players are having to choose between certain weapons. It all changes based on their situations and what's occurring. They'll value things differently. Even though some weapons and items definitely give you an upper hand in surviving and winning. However, others are kind of fun to play and are maybe new or more rare and you normally don't get to play with those. Another example of scarcity trade-offs and opportunity costs in Fortnite is when we're actually selecting items. What item should we hold? Whenever we swap an item out and drop it and pick up a different one, well, we just made a trade-off and an opportunity cost because of scarcity, the amount of items and weapons we can actually hold in the game. So as we can see, there's tons of economic concepts just happy on the surface level of Fortnite. Now, the next time that someone tells you to put down the controller and stop playing Fortnite, you can just tell them that you're learning about economics. And while these decisions might not be that hard for us to make, it's actually pretty profound of how many decisions players make. It's impressive. And these decisions tell us a lot about not only just economics, but your own personality, your play style, how you're valuing certain items, and how those values change over the course of time as different situations change. Even your ability to be able to process information at a very fast rate to make quick decisions that are pretty important within the game world and definitely connect to your survival. So we can see all these things occurring every single time someone plays Fortnite. Hopefully this video was entertaining and helped you understand some of the basics of economics. I'm Mr. Sin. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and check out some of the other videos on the channel. Until next time, I'll see you online.